Hello and welcome to Photo Walkthrough. My name's John Arnold and this is Tutorial 8, Chapter 2. First up, it's the start of a new month, so if you're one of the many wonderful people that vote for Photo Walkthrough on Podcast Alley, I really appreciate that. I'll put a voting box in the show notes and remember, although you need to give an email address to vote, you absolutely won't get spammed as a result. Also, if you're interested in improving your photography and visiting beautiful southern Germany, then remember I'll be co-hosting the Tips from the Top Floor Photography Workshop between the 11th and the 15th of September. I covered the details last week, so I won't go over it again, but it's a great opportunity to get together with your fellow photographers and learn while making some new friends. And there are only three places left, so book quickly if you've been thinking about it but not signed up yet. And finally, before I get started, I talk a lot on this show, but if you're interested in hearing a little more from me, then check out Iberian X Perello's podcast, The Candid Frame. He interviews photographers in each show and has some excellent and very well-known guests. His interviews are always in-depth and very insightful, especially if you want to get inside the head of another photographer. He was kind enough to ask me to be a guest on his show this week, and you can check that out right now by visiting www.thecandidframe.com and as usual, I'll put that link in the show notes. Right, let's get started on our flower triptych. Last week we added a colour gradient to our image and then masked out the centre so that we let the yellow come through there. This week I'm starting out by looking at the blurred background and I see it's a little uneven up here in the top right and down here in the bottom left. So let's see what I can do about that. Um, I'm going to start by just bringing back my palettes by pressing the tab key and zoom that out, hold down the spacebar just to drag that image back up there. I, I work a lot, I've mentioned this before but I'm going to mention it again, we've got loads of new subscribers so I'm sorry to those of you that have been watching for a long time but I am going to occasionally recover things I've mentioned. Um, all we've got at an enormous number of new subscribers coming in, we've just got a reasonably good rating on iTunes. So um, you see me work with the image here on the background a lot. The way I do that is with the F key. If you press the F key it cycles through um, a whole bunch of different placement modes for the for the window. The typical window looks like this. So you would typically have your image in a window like that. Um, that's that's not a bad way to work. But personally, I prefer if you press F once, it takes the image out of the window and puts the image sort of on the background, and then you can drag it around any way you want it. And you've got all sorts of, you're using as much screen space as you like, as you can. Now you do have the layer palettes floating over the top here, but if you've got a dual monitor set up, you can drag those palettes off onto the other screen. And that's my normal way of working. I've got two monitors here. I normally have the image taking this entire screen, and I have my palettes off on the, on the screen to the right. So that's a pretty good way to work if you can do dual monitors. If you can't do dual monitors then keep your palettes as small as you can, give yourself as much screen space as you can and try and uh, keep the image somewhere so that the detail that you're working on is visible. But don't zoom in too much. You always want to do these edits in the context of the greater image. You sometimes find if you're doing a, uh, you know, an edit on just a small part of the image you'll find that you, you put a lot of time into one little detail and you zoom out and you find that either it's a very small part of the image that wasn't really all that visible and it was kind of a waste of your time or alternatively you've put so much work into that one bit that that one bit really then stands out from the rest of the image and looks different perhaps you've colored it differently or you've done more detail work in there or something like that but just remember to make your edits always in the context of the greater image so be prepared to zoom right out look at the whole image do that a lot Right, I'm going to start, as I say, by just looking at these lighter stripes up here in the top right and the bottom right. And I'm going to correct that with a soft light layer. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to hit the new layer button down here at the bottom of the layers palette. If I press that, it creates a layer above the one I'd got selected. Now, um, if I just undo that, I started with the background layer selected and the reason I did that was because I want the layer to be just above the background. I don't want it above the gradient map, I want it below the gradient map. Remember you can drag these layers around, you just click and drag them, but I wanted that created in the right place. So I've made a new layer and I'm going to change the blending mode which is this drop down up here. I'm going to change the blending mode to soft light and I'm going to call it a soft light layer. And then choosing my brush I've got black selected already, but if I didn't, I could press D to bring back black and white and X to switch back and forth between the colors. And I'm going to grab my 
brush and I'm just going to I'm setting a brush size using the square bracket keys about the size of the edit I want to make a little bit smaller actually because fuzzy edge brushes overlap the edge a little bit and I'm just gently I'm using my Wacom tablet here as always this is like an advert for Wacom but they don't pay me honest um, and I'm pressing very lightly on the graphics tablet just to sort of layer in the dark tones on that soft light layer and if I just quickly drag these layers around in different order you'll see that the effect is quite different if it's above the gradient map so if I drag that above the gradient map you can see it goes lighter and we're starting to get a richer blue here which is not really what I want I want the rich blue to be on the petals of the flower not so much in the background I want the I want the flower to lift right off the background so if I drag my soft light layer back down you see that darkens down and I'm just de-emphasizing that bright stripe and I'm going to do the same thing on this one here just painting a little bit of black on that soft light layer. This one was stronger so I need to press a little harder to to reduce it in the same way as the one above. And again, just don't try and do it all in one stroke. If you're using a mouse, be prepared to use the opacity slider up here. Um, with the Wacom tablet you can safely leave that at 90 or 100 percent. With a, with a mouse you might want to drag that down to sort of 20 percent and just click and drag in there you saw that that 20 percent that I did that with my mouse that's made quite a visible stripe so I'm going to undo that let's drag that down to I don't know six or seven percent something like that that's a much more gentle edit look so be prepared to, to, to layer things in even if you're using a mouse be prepared to, to do very light opacity strokes in order to make the effect gentle Right, I'm just really trying to close that stripe up a little bit and it's looking a little bit false at the moment so I'm just going to um, try and fuzz the edges a little bit as well okay well I'm gonna stop there I could spend hours on this but um, I don't want to make the video too long so I want to get on with the next step right so we've reduced those stripes there. If I just turn that layer visibility on and off by clicking the eyeball next to the layer, you can see that that's made quite a big difference. And that does just bring down the background a little bit. If I had longer, I'd like it to be a little bit more fuzzy like these other corners over here. But for the time being, let's leave it at that. Um, the next thing that strikes me about this image is that when we added this gradient map, which I'll just turn on and off there, a couple of spots appeared on the flower that are uh, fairly unattractive. This one in particular um, draws your eye quite a lot. So I'm going to take that out with a little spot edit. Now I like to do spot edits onto a new layer so once again I've set in my background and I've made a new layer by clicking the new layer icon down here and I'm going to call this spot edits and there's a whole bunch of different ways of doing spot edits which I mentioned in a previous tutorial. I think it's the um, uh, the tree tutorial that I that I did a sort of a rundown of a number of different spot editing methods. The the method that I'm going to choose in this case is the uh, healing brush tool, not the spot healing brush tool. I'm finding at the moment that I'm getting better results with the healing brush tool. So with my spot edits layer selected, I want to turn off the layers above it because I'm going to do this thing with the sample all layers here. So in the spot healing brush tool, sorry the healing brush tool, not the spot healing brush tool I've turned on the sample all layers tick box at the top and the align tick box and you don't want those others visible because it's going to sample what we can see on the screen so I want it to sample just from the background and what I'm going to do with this brush tool, I've got my spot edits layer selected I'm going to set my brush to about the size of the edit I'm going to hold down the alt key and tell it that I'm going to be sampling texture, not color but texture from that point there on the image so I've clicked there and then I'm just going to paint over the top and what that's done is it's taken the texture from elsewhere and it's used the surrounding colors to fill in what the colors of that particular part should be so you can see that's actually a very clean edit let's just have a quick hunt around the rest of the image I'm holding down the space bar and clicking and dragging you can see that it's not quite as sharp as I would like this image I'm going to do a little sharpening later on that there's another little spot there that could use editing out so alt click there 
option click on a Mac and just take that spot out there's another little spot there alter option click there a smaller brush that's that one gone and there's one there and I think this is probably the last one so alter option click there painting there that didn't work out so well let's try that again that's better right okay I think that's probably fairly tidy oh, is that one there there's one a couple of little blobs there look let's just take those out as well just tidying up the image because when I put the gradient map on this it really emphasizes any uh, sort of grainy or spotty bits of the image because we're putting such a uh, a wild color gradient on it so let's put back my background edit and my gradient map and that's looking quite a lot cleaner now so right I think the next thing to do um, just to bring it closer to the final image is to be adding a, a, a little more contrast I think so what I'm going to do I, I want the contrast to appear around the ends of the petals in particular because I really want to emphasize this rich blue we've got we've got the cyans and the dark blues in the background but we've got this very vibrant blue on the end of the petals and it's not showing quite so well in certain petals these two in particular so what I'm going to do I'm going to add a gradient uh, sorry a contrast layer um, and I want that above my spot edits and my soft light uh, I keep uh, as a matter of common practice I keep as much pixel data as I can at the bottom and I keep light and uh, color data towards the top of the layer order so I've got bitmap data as the background spot edits is bitmap data because it's copies and, and edits to that background soft light is kind of bitmap data because it's actual I'm painting black actual pixels albeit with a soft light blending mode and above that I'm going to make a new adjustment layer this is going to be a darkening layer I'm making this is the new adjustment layer icon here I'm going to make a new curves layer I'm going to make no changes at all here I'm just going to press OK so I've got a curves layer that's doing nothing at the moment if I turn it on and off you, no change this is going to be a darkening layer and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take, take that curves layer and I'm going to set the blending mode to multiply one of the things that often trips me up is on Windows this doesn't happen on the Mac if you choose a, a blending mode here you'll see that it's got this dotted line around it and that box is still selected that'll mean that keystrokes don't do anything so if I press the E key to try and select the eraser you can see it's still on the brush tool it's not making any effect so if you want to if you get stuck and your keys aren't working you can't change your brush size you can't change tools or something like that probably you've got something selected and quite often it's this um, blending mode selection drop down here hit the escape key that deselects it now I can press the E key to jump to the eraser tool or the brush tool or make my brush size bigger or smaller bit of a gotcha that quite often trips me up I'm forever wondering why, no, why nothing's happening quick hit to the escape key sorts it out so going back to my darkening layer this is a curves layer it's set to multiply I'm going to rename it to darken renaming things just by double clicking on the name and I don't want this darken effect, effect to, to uh, cover the whole image I just want to paint the change in in certain places on the image so with black as my foreground color here remember you can get black and white back by pressing the D key you can switch the keys switch the colors with the X key um, so I want black as my foreground I'm going to click on the layer mask for that darken layer and I'm going to press alt delete and that will fill that layer mask with black and that's option delete on a Mac of course so now with my brush tool and I'm going to press X to get white as my foreground color I'm just going to paint black in around the tips of these petals just to bring in as you watch I'm painting white onto a layer mask and remember white reveals black conceals so I'm painting white on in order to reveal the darkening So I'm painting a little bit of white around the tips of the petals in particular this petal here which needs quite a lot again pressing lightly on the graphics tablet just to blend it down the petal pressing fairly hard on the, on the end of the petal and just lightening my stroke as I go down the petal in order to blend it down I just want a little dash of blue on the end of each petal and I've probably gone a little bit too far on the end of that petal there so pressing the X key to go back to black shrinking my brush down a little bit just blend out the slightly harsh change I made there okay 
that's that's not bad. That's looking like a reasonably clean edit. Just a little bit of more blue there, a little bit more blue there. That's good. That's good. Okay, and I'm going to finish up now just by doing a little contrast change. And this is exactly the same process as the darkening layer. I'm going to make another curves layer. And again, I'm just going to press OK on it. And this time, to make it a contrast layer, I'm going to choose Overlay. And again, this is a, a very harsh edit. Um, that darkened layer, by the way, I left it on 100% opacity. Remember I said before, typically you'll bring these, in, these layers in at 50% opacity, um, because it's sometimes useful to be able to drag the slider, the opacity slider up and down. So if you've made a change and you think it's either too harsh or not harsh enough, you have got the room to slide it up and down there. 50% gives you that room in both directions. Um, I didn't do that on the darkening layer because I was just doing a, a gentle a gentle change. You can see I wasn't making much uh, effect on the image there. Typically I would make that a 50% layer but it doesn't really matter here. So on my, um, on my contrast layer, which I'll just rename to contrast, once again with my layer mask selected going to switch to the black is my foreground color. Alt or Option Delete fills the layer mask with black. And this time, once again, with my brush and white as my foreground color. Slightly bigger brush. I'm just going to paint the contrast in. And I do want contrast in the middle here. You know, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that this yellow in the middle here needs to sort of burst out from the center of the center of the flower. And then I'm also just going to that didn't work so well. I'm just, I'll control Z and undo that. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast along the petals so that the color transition along the petals goes from yellow to white to that vibrant blue. So I'm just painting some contrast down the petals. Try not to destroy the vibrant blue at the ends. I'm pressing fairly hard on the graphics tablet here because this is a 50% opacity layer. I need to press a little harder for the effect to be very visible. And if I'm, I'm finding that's not bad. That's not bad. Let me just, just going to really burn that contrast in in the center there. I think I can go a little bit further with that. So I'm going to click on my opacity slider, just drag it up a little, maybe make that a little bit stronger. That's perhaps a bit much. Let's take it down to about 60-65%, and that's looking pretty good there. So I think that's probably a good place to stop for this week. Um, next week we are going to carry on just finishing off the, um, the contrast and brightness on the petals in the center. We're going to do a little bit of sharpening, and then I'm going to duplicate the image so that we do the triptych. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next week.